What is up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tattoo Critiques. If you're new here, I'm Pony Lawson and what we like to do is talk about your tattoos. Whether you're an artist or a collector, I like to talk about them all and give you some tips, tricks, uh, anything like that to help you further your career. This week we're doing artist submissions, so let's get into it. Okay, the first tattoo sent in is from Matt Nobbs, and Matt, you sent in this hand poke sleeve that you did on yourself over the past year. Clearly, you've got some patience because you say this took 135 hours. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, obviously, this is what boredom looks like. I could have thought of a million other things to do, but hey, I mean, good on you. Do you have cable TV? Does Norfolk have the internet? Yeah, I mean, the quality is really not too awful, to be honest, for it being hand poked. If this were a machine, you know, I'd probably have a lot more gripes about it, but I'm very surprised that you did this all hand poked uh, over. 135 hours. I'm pretty impressed. The black stipple work around the red, it just really gives it a nice contrast. Even the red itself is very vivid and bold and strong, so um, good on ya. I could see you were maybe trying to do some sort of artistic effect here in the middle with the solid black around the red and then maybe the dissipating dots around that. It comes off a little harsh. I wish those dots were a little more feathered into the solid black. It would make that transition feel a lot smoother. Again, I'm, I'm pretty shocked that you actually committed and did the entire arm here. The blacks are black, the reds are bright and vivid and I think you've got a really cool effect here as far as the negative space runes or lettering that you have on this tattoo and then you kind of again dissipate uh, toward the outside away from the letters. The feathering on the dots on the arm feel more consistent than the dots on the hand. Got a few blowouts in there which you've mentioned yourself as well on the wrist you know you can really see them on the lines uh, they really shine there you know they're not super clean but again you are hand poking this yourself so you're venturing into a lot of uncharted territory. So overall really not a bad tattoo at all especially being on yourself and being entirely hand poked. So thanks again Matt Nobs, I appreciate you sending that in. C plus. All right, the next tattoo sent in is from Ron Cohen. And Ron, you sent in this little Mort from Madagascar tattoo on this girl's back. At first glance, I love this tattoo. I think it's very cute and the shading is uh, very soft. But as we zoom in, I feel like we're kind of losing things like outlines around the things that are most important. I think you would greatly benefit if you were to have used an outliner uh, around the eyes, ears, fingers, toes. For sake of longevity, I think it's ideal to have these outlines around uh, those important pieces. As time goes on, uh, some of these little finite details might kind of fade away the sun might bleach them and they're just not going to be as strong so if you were to kind of just finish off the rest of those fingers uh, and harden out the eyes and ears and things like that I just think this will be a stronger tattoo for a lot longer and I think it would just be great to have those sharp outlines up front to contrast with that soft fluffy tail in the back that adds just a little bit of depth you know uh, similar to a portrait you want to keep the important things up front with sharp lines and put the uh, less important things the things that are pushed back uh, using mags and things like that just to keep them more soft overall cool tattoo run uh, like I said I do like this tattoo a lot. It's done very well. I just think it could use maybe another 45 minutes, an hour or so, just really fine tuning some things. Thanks again, Ron, for sending that in. And the next tattoo is sent in from Lyndon Corcala. And Lyndon, you sent in this super bright and vivid uh, Mars Attacks tattoo that's super cool and pleasing to the eye right off the bat. When we zoom in, we can see that you've got a bunch of different line weights going on, which you know I love. You know, you've got this big, bold, heavy, dramatic outline around the entire tattoo along with the lettering, and then you've got this smaller, finite uh, detail line work around the things like the arm and uh, the fingers, the teeth, and the ray gun, which really send this tattoo home. And we've got the when I'm calling you blasting out of his head, you know, which kills the aliens in the movie, so that's pretty cool. And another thing that I like about this text running through the tattoo is the gradient that kind of matches the back of the alien and the backpack as well. It just really ties it all together. The white highlights are interesting. I'd be very curious to see how they look, you know, a, a few years from now just to see how well they settled in. In this case, the white plays a very important role. It lets you know what is kind of wet or shiny. You know, that's why it's used in the brain a lot and the teeth. I think if the white were to fade away from the teeth, that'd be okay, but if the white were to fade away from the brain and around the eyes and things like that, it's just going to make the face look a little less dramatic. But still a very cool tattoo overall, Lyndon. I appreciate you sending that in. The next tattoo is sent in from Dirt. Just Dirt. Dirte. <laughs> Tattoos by Dirte. That's uh, French. Dirt. You sent in a American Psycho tattoo that you added a couple more eyes to. Uh, let's kind of break this down and see what we can do to help improve your work. So the first thing I notice when I look at this as an artist, especially a portrait artist, is lack of shading or layering uh, over the entire tattoo. There's a lot of skin tone present here and a very minimal amount of pepper shading. I think you could benefit from really slowing down and uh, work on layering these shades in. You know, just when you think you're done with the shape that you've made, kind of go back over that very slowly and 
and just work it in ever so softly. You wanna get rid of almost all of that skin tone that's there. If it's not white on paper, it shouldn't be white on the tattoo. I know some tattoos can actually look very good with minimal shading, but from what you're trying to accomplish here, I just think that you're lacking a lot of layering. Some things that could really help you is lowering your machine speed, lowering your hand speed, and then just kind of use a pendulum stroke and just slowly move in uh, that needle into the skin and just make sure that that skin tone is entirely gray. You know, whether it's 10%, 20%, 50% or entirely black, you wanna make sure that there is no skin tone shining through. If you're using a 10% wash, you're not going to be able to make a black shade. No matter how hard you try, it's only gonna come out 10%. So don't be afraid of just slowly building in those shades. So now onto the features of the tattoo themselves. Uh, I feel like some things kind of got lost in the nose area, like the way the eyes kind of come down and meet and intersect the nose, it kind of just gets a little jumbled, uh, like he's been in a boxing fight. Maybe he has and that's why he's all bloody, but I'm pretty sure he got done killing a lady of the night. I think this tattoo would benefit from a lot of liner work overall. You know, everything kind of just seems to have a little chunk to it. You know, if we go up in the hair, uh, the way the hair looks at the top, it's just kind of chunky. The way the blood sits on the face, just a little chunky. If we look at the ears on the side of the face, it's just, uh, it kind of looks like there may have been a line there, but it's just, there's nothing strong to hold it together. The lips as well, there's, there's a use of mag shade to help it look like a nice fold of lips, but I think, again, you could have benefited from using a liner. In the same respect that you used it for the teeth, you know, you could use it for the lips, uh, around the nostrils, uh, the eyes, the eyebrows, and the hair. Overall, I think your greatest enemy here is time. It just kind of seems like you're rushing through this a little bit. I'm not sure exactly how long this took you, but I would say if you took double the amount of time on this tattoo, I promise you it's gonna look that much better. I'm not saying this is a bad tattoo by any means. I think this is actually a good looking tattoo. I'm just trying to give you some advice, some tips that I've learned over the past few years that maybe you could use uh, in your arsenal as well. So thanks, Dirt, for sending that in. Ooh, I'm an apprentice out of New Hampshire. Okay, the next tattoo sent in is from Benjamin Zygmanis. And Benjamin, you mentioned you're an apprentice, uh, and I'm pretty surprised to see because most of the tattoo apprentices I see on this show are not that good. This is a tattoo that we'd probably normally see out of a few year tattooer, if not more. The colors are bold and vivid, and you can clearly tell what's going on from across the street. The gradients that you have in the leaves down at the bottom, I absolutely love. You've got the right amount of dark green in there mixed with a nice olive green, uh, and then just a little bit of yellow on the tips to help them feel kind of dead or elusive some life in there so uh, excellent job on those leaves and I do love how you didn't put that yellow on all the leaves you kept some of them especially in the back you uh, kept the green in there just so there's a variety uh, going on and they're not all looking the same I notice a lot of artists tend to do that they might leave a little bit of yellow on the tip of a leaf and then they think it's a good idea so they put it on every single leaf when in actuality it probably looks better having some of that variation you've got a nice amount of black shade in this tattoo I do wish there was a bit more but uh, it's nice to see at least some black shading in there whether it be a single or a three, you're using some sort of liner in the petal of this flower to give it some sort of a shape and motion. The lines that you have in the skull as well are just giving everything a nice general sense of shape and flow. You know, if you look uh, to the thin lines that are on the nose cavity, the bridge of the nose, you can tell that those lines are there for a purpose. They're not just there to look like a cracked skull, but they're actually making it look like the uh, bridge of the nose is being pulled back. Same thing with the lines around the teeth, uh, the lines around the eyes. It just gives your brain a sense of flow and motion. So you have a nice gradient going on in the skull when it comes from, uh, let's say, his lower jawbone. You have this nice black here to the nice dark blue to the nice light blue. Uh, I kind of wish the same gradient was going on in these petals as well. If we look to the left of the skull, we have this little purple patchy area, uh, and that's just unfortunately what it looks like is patchy. If you were to have started with a black and worked your way to the darker purple and uh, you know worked your way midway with those lighter purples, I think it would have just ended up a lot smoother than what it is now. It seems like you have the right idea in some parts of the petals here. I see the black shade to the middle tone purple to the lighter tone purple. But when we get into the bigger petals, I feel like that's where you're having trouble executing that. So overall, solid tattoo, Ben. Uh, pretty happy to see with where you're at right now. You really know how to control your lines, and you've got a pretty solid understanding of how to work those gradients and shades. So keep up the good work, Ben. Thank you for sending that in. Okay, that's gonna wrap it up for the tattoos this week. But before we go, let's talk about my favorite tattoo of the episode, which was sent in by Linden and this very red Mars Attacks tattoo. I think you really pulled out your bag of tricks on this tattoo. You know, you've got a lot of different line weights going on. Your gradients are smooth. Your lines are sharp. The colors are bright and vivid. This tattoo really does have it all. And it's a badass reference. I mean, who doesn't love Mars Attacks? So congratulations, Linden, on being this week's winner. All right, my featured artist of the week is Anna Wall, coming from Seattle, Washington. Stumbling across Anna's work, you can tell she comes from a traditional background. Initially, you may not think her tattoos are crazy, mind-blowing, over-the-top pieces 
things, but I do think that her tattoos are a great example of what a solid traditional tattoo should look like. Her color work and saturation is on point, and her line work is very well controlled, and you can really tell she knows what she's doing. So make sure you stop by her Instagram page, and give her a follow, and let her know I sent you. All right, that's going to wrap it up for another episode of Tattoo Critiques, but before you go, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, share this video with all your friends, and if you'd like to send in your tattoos, you can do so to ponycritiques at gmail.com. Hopefully we'll see them on a future episode, and I will see you next week.